You are Locked On Ole Miss, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks again for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first and listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. Hello, I'm Stephen Willis from the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, and I'm joined by Mr. Baseball, Derek Vandegriff, on the show today. Derek, we tried to bury Ole Miss baseball for multiple weeks. We probably uh-huh. did that premature. Johnny Long woke up Ole Miss's baseball team. Uh-huh. Eight to nothing loss Friday night, kind of more of the same. An extra inning hard fought day when Liam Doyle pitched and all of that. A home run uh-huh. by Johnny Long that was apparently a game winning hit. He flipped the bat towards the dugout. Mike Bianco took exception to it, went out there, got ejected in the game, Hoosier style. That's right. Well, Ole Miss decides that, hey, Mississippi State's not beating us tonight. Then my boy hits a walk-off single, and the next day Ole Miss just completely dominates this past weekend. Hey, if if anybody wants some good karma, the last time a game got canceled that Ole Miss was supposed to play in Jonesboro, Ole Miss won the national title after being the last team into the tournament. So for whatever reason, that happened. I, Ole Miss baseball is not dead yet. They played pretty well. They pitched the ball well. They're getting the rotation in order. They're hitting the mm-hmm. ball better. I, I, th- I think they're figuring this out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So, so just kind of touch on a couple things you said. Uh, you know, go, going back to the game getting canceled in Jonesboro and us going on to win a national championship. There's the reason you've seen me wear this hat the last few shows <laughs> that that I have done, uh, and 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 that's because the camo hats is what brought us good luck there in 2022 when we went on that run. Um, so yeah, and, uh, yeah, definitely a lot of people definitely tried to bury Ole Miss baseball, right? It was looking pretty bleak there for a while. Um, yeah, yeah, you're one of them now. I'm I'm not going to raise my hand. I was the one trying to lift everybody up to tell y'all what we needed to do. Uh, but you know, it, it did look bleak there for a while. Look, credit these kids for, for going out there and fighting, right? Uh, you get beat eight to nothing on Friday, like you mentioned. And, and quite frankly, up until the eighth inning there on Saturday, things weren't going very well either. Uh, you know, but but then we end up scoring the four runs, tying it up. And like you said, Johnny Long with the uh, – I my, my co-host Hitch, I think, put it best. He had a walk-off home run celebration for a go-ahead home run, right? You know, that's, that's what you do when you walk it off. You sit there and take that sucker 75 feet down the line, toss the bat and all that because there's really no consequences at that point. Well, Mike Bianco got out there, and he he took quite a bit of offense to it, got tossed out of the game. The guys really battled back there, and, you know, it, it had to be tough for him. That, you know, you give up the go-ahead home run in the 11th, you battle back to tie it, and the, and the same thing in the 12th. And then Jackson Ross there, a uh, huge hit for a guy that that's struggled a little bit in SEC play. Uh, great job by him. And then you carry the momentum into Sunday. That's the big part of that. You know, it's you're, you're on such a high – they're walking that thing off and and then you come back Sunday and you walk it off again in a completely different way. You walk it off with the 10 run rule there with a uh, home run by Will Furness there. So we got some momentum going now. Um, We'll talk about a little bit later in the show, how to make regional postseason is definitely in the cards now though. This kept the season alive and, and, you know, we've got a real big series in Athens coming up against a team that doesn't lose a whole lot at home. They're 22 and two so far on the year. So, Rebels got their work cut out for them this weekend. Yeah, and and we'll go ahead and start with this one. It, does Mike Bianco pitch to Charlie Condon? He's like Pete in Cavilla. No. Uh, so uh, after y'all listen to this, head to the SC After Dark YouTube channel, find Dids in the Dugout. There is not a chance that Charlie Condon sees a single pitch out of the pitcher's hand all weekend for me. Um, <clears throat> I was telling Hitch, it, it, it reminds me back, it was 2003, the Atlanta Braves were playing the San Francisco Giants. And I don't know if you know this or not, Stephen, but uh, the Giants had a pretty good hitter back there in the early 2000s by the name of Barry Bonds. And he had everything. And when he hit it, it went out of the park. Well, the Braves manager was Bobby Cox, and, and he was a little bullheaded. Uh, and he wasn't giving anybody anything for free. And they asked him about that going into game one of that series. Hey, are you going to walk Barry Bonds? Well, of course I'm not walking Barry Bonds. You know, if he gets anything off us, he's going to earn it. 
Well, very first at bat of the game, Barry Bonds deposit one about 475 feet into McCovey Cove up there in uh, in San Francisco. And and needless to say, he he got a lot of intentional walks after that one at bat. Uh, you 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 kind of learn your lesson and pick your battles at that point. Uh, <clears throat> Condon doesn't see a single pitch from me. The only time I even consider throwing him a pitch is if the bases are loaded and we're only up by one run then I might throw him a pitch. Now, honestly, I probably still walk him and go ahead and tie the game. That way he doesn't give them the lead. He's that good of a hitter, man. Um, but, no, I don't throw him a pitch all weekend. I don't – you know, that's that's why I like today's baseball because you don't even have to throw four out of the strike zone. Like, I'm not even doing that thing where, you know, we'll keep it so far out of the zone to where he can't hit it. I'm not getting – What was that, what was that Austin Anderson? Back. Was that Austin Anderson? Yep, that's, yep <laughs> sure, sure was. We talked about that on the show, too. You don't even give a guy like that a chance to hit a mistake if you don't get it far enough out of the zone. You throw up four fingers to him to take his base, and you take your chances with the next guy. Um, but everybody needs to tune in, watch Charlie Condon. He is one of the truly special baseball players of our generation. Um, I, I've spent the last few days trying to think of somebody to compare him to in college baseball that, that I've seen over the last several years, and I've got nothing, man. He is absolutely insane. It's He's Pete, it's over Pete and Cabilla. It's Pete yeah, and Cabilla. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go. go. Going back to uh, 85, is that what it was? Yeah, it was, it was right? like Oklahoma yeah. State, Robin Ventura, yeah. those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ended, up, ended up winning a national championship that year, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, yeah, uh, but but Condon's unbelievable, man. He's slugging over a 1,000, which is a really good OPS for anybody else. Uh, hitting 486, just just unbelievable what he's been able to do. But, no, there's there's no chance he sees a single pitch out of a pitcher's hands in, if, if I'm Mike Bianco. Now, I don't think that's the way it's going to go. I don't think that the, that's the way Mike is wired. Uh, but he is that good, though. Uh, so, no, I wouldn't pitch to him. But, yes, I do think Mike Bianco does. Yeah, it, it's really interesting because Charlie Condon is one of – I think his power rating is up towards 70 on the major league scale or something like that. It's some some yeah. absurd number. And uh -huh. Jack, Jack Caglione or whatever from yeah. Florida hit a home run 518 feet. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Those two guys are, are, are absolute monsters at the plate. And what what makes Jack so impressive is he goes out there and he shoves on Sundays on top of it from the pitching mound too, right? He's a really good two-way player. Um, you know, I know this is an old miss show, but I, I encourage everybody, if y'all have not heard the Charlie Condon story of how he got to where he's at now, uh, y'all go look that up, listen to it. It's an incredible story. He wasn't even offered a scholarship to play baseball. He was a football player, really wanted to play baseball at Georgia. He was a walk-on, redshirted his walk-on freshman year, and then last year during his redshirt freshman year is, is when he really broke out. Obviously, they were uh, – they were wise enough to give him a little bit of scholarship money after what he did last year. Uh, so that was pretty wise on their part. Now he's the, the best player in the game. So a really cool story with him. Uh, and and he, he's an absolute treat to watch. So uh, if nothing else, Ole Miss fans are in for a treat to watch the best college baseball player in the entire country this weekend. Thanks for watching the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. When we come back, we're going to talk about how this Ole Miss baseball team makes an NCAA or regional and get a little bit of a preview of what's to happen outside of that with the Georgia Bulldogs this weekend. But right now, I do want to let you know, we've all been there, either as a player or a fan. It's halftime. The scoreboard's not looking great. You're feeling low, not sure if your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, say to yourself, it's time to get back in this game pull off some bank heist, and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right. The smash hit mobile game, Monopoly Go, lets you compete with your friends for the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly game you love, but on your phone, anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress with your friends. There's so much to do. There's 
countless dynamic mo monopoly boards. You can make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball, and you can change other, charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests, and they have in-tournament um, games as well to get extra rewards and climb that leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or the Google Play Store. Let's get straight to the point. You want to grow your portfolio to deal with the rising cost of inflation, pay off your debt or your mortgage. Hey, this is like real life monopoly. Pretty much anything standing in your way in front of financial freedom is in the cards, right? With Yahoo Finance, you can get access to the news, data and tools that you need in order to help reach your financial freedom. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or you're looking for extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. They're the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at financial news, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. Securely link your brokerage account for the unified view of your wealth, including 401k and other investments, a comprehensive perspective is what sets you apart with great investors. It's how Yahoo Finance um, ensures that you have insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. With a community over 90 million users each month, their real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. Success for comprehensive financial news and analysis. Visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com. That's the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. Again, that's yahoofinance.com. All right, anyway, check out Yahoo um, Finance and um, Locked On Sports Today 24-7 um, streaming channel. All right, <clears throat> my voice is dealing with the fact that I had so many shows today, how does Mike Bianco get Ole Miss into a regional? Yeah, so uh, things are really looking better after taking two from Mississippi State, obviously. Um, the thing Ole Miss really has going for them right now is their metrics are really, really good. They're sitting number 28 in the RPI, number three in strength of schedule. And so that lowers the bar as far mm. as where we have to go to to get into a regional. Uh, with, with metrics like this, that's, uh, you know, a, a 13 and 17 record in the SEC is more than likely going to get you in. And so, you know, you take two out of three this weekend and go to seven and 11. The RPI is going to go up. Uh, Georgia's number 10, and this is a road series. So, so that's obviously going to help the RPI even more. And then you've still got uh, uh, really high RPI games. Alabama at home's in the 20s. Um, Auburn, I think, is in the top 10. They're like number three, I think. It's insane. Uh, and then Texas A&M at home, they're number one RPI team. So we've got a lot of opportunities ahead of us. What Ole Miss needs to do is just start stacking conference wins, right? Uh, you know, we're, we're not in a position to where we're, you know, Take Mississippi State, for example. Uh, you would look at Mississippi State and maybe assume they're in a better position than we are to make it to the, SEC or to, to the NCAA tournament. But their metrics aren't near as good as ours. Their uh, RPI is around 50. So you're talking about them having to get to like 15 and 15 to get an invite into the NCAA tournament. Ole Miss is in much better shape. Uh, RPI is probably going to end up landing, especially if we win, enough games to get to that 13 and 17, uh, you know, 14 and 16, and you're a lock at that point. But then you're talking about an RPI, probably high teens, low 20, somewhere around 20. And uh, and so that's going to get you in at that point. And the good news for Ole Miss, uh, you know, there's no such thing as an easy conference weekend here in the SEC, but it lightens up a lot more. You know, you, you've already played Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, you know, the three juggernauts in, in, in SEC play right now. Yeah, you still have Texas A&M there towards the end of the year, the second to last series. But you get that one at home at least. Uh, big thing for Ole Miss, again, start taking series, win games. Uh, I think the one this weekend is really important because you look at it, it's on the road. It's against a team that doesn't lose a lot at home. As, as I mentioned earlier, they're 22-2 and two at home. But if you can get two wins right here, um, that allows you to drop two against Texas A&M 
at home later on in the year. And uh, and that's that's going to be key, I think. So so we need to start winning road games to give ourselves a little bit of leeway and runway later in the year when we do play. Uh, Texas A&M mainly is the one I'm looking at. And and real quick, Stephen, I, I really like Ole Miss's spot this weekend. Uh, again, on Dids in the Dugout, we dive into it a lot further. But uh, Georgia's pitchers really struggle against left-handed hitters. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed or not, Ole Miss has a few really good left-handed hitters in their lineup. Uh, Andrew Fisher, Will Furness, Smithwick, you know, he, he he was playing right field for us last weekend. But even if he's not in, in, in right field and you put Tracy Hughes back out there, that's a left-handed at bat that we could really use to get going. Uh, and, and then Braden Randall there at shortstop as well. This is really set up well for Ole Miss to take advantage from a matchup standpoint that, that I don't think we've had in, you know, really about three or four weeks in SEC play. And they really struggle. I, I say really struggle. They struggle more against lefties when you dive into splits. Uh, their, their offense isn't near as good against lefties. So for me, Saturday's the key. Liam Dole has to have a good game. He has to go out there and be effective for us. You have to take the Saturday game this weekend. That's the one you have to get. And then you try to steal a Friday or Sunday game, something like that, to win two out of three. But I really do love this matchup, even though it's against a really tough Georgia team that doesn't lose a lot at home. Yeah, it should be really interesting to see exactly what happens. Anyway, thank you for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. We're um, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day go to the sec after dark channel check out dids in the dugout it's going to be over there just in a little bit and we'll see exactly how that goes Derek, thank you so much mr baseball hopefully Ole Miss can get two or three against the georgia bulldogs they can take out bulldogs back to back weeks yep yeah that's exactly what's happening hi toddy brother hi toddy man